Hey guys, it's Licious Kid from Climax Combo, and we're back with another Leaks of the Week. This is like my sixth time trying to do this Leaks of the Week. I feel like I'm not explaining the cards well enough, so I keep redoing it. So hopefully, this time I get it right. But anyways, this week will feature cards for Charlotte, and we start a little bit of Dog Days. Uh, I believe Dog Days is coming out on the 13th of November, so fairly soon. Uh, I believe Dog Days is a 50 card extra booster, and uh, it has the double R rarity, so it's going to be very similar to Lock Horizon. So before we get started, I'd like to mention that I don't know that much about Dog Days. Uh, it's been a long time since I've played against one, and I don't see much like discussion or deck builds about it just because it's not a very popular set. So if I am missing some obvious synergy, like always, do let me know. And also, my friend Russell, he has purchased uh, booster boxes for Charlotte. They are currently on the way, so we'll probably have a box opening for Charlotte sometimes next week. Just depends on when they come and when our schedules match up, because he is a very busy man. Anyways, with that out of the way, let's get to it. So first off, we have the 00 1500 double R. Something important, Otosaka Ayumi, superpower and pizza sauce. Uh, what she does is when she's played from hand to stage, you can place a top card of your opponent's stock to the waiting room. If you do, choose one card in your opponent's waiting room and place it into his or her stock. Next, it has a awesome on play ability. When this card is played from your hand to the stage, you can pay cost, which is pay one, clock yourself. If you do, search your deck for up to one level one or lower character card, show it to your opponent, add it to your hand, and then shuffle your deck. So right off the bat, uh, Ayumi, her second ability is super awesome. I'm sure we all know this by now, but the second ability is like the level 0 Riki from Little Busters. And this ability is just super awesome. If your set has it, you usually play 3 or 4 of it because it is just too strong. So this should be no exception. So definitely, definitely, definitely I would say Ayumi right off the bat. An amazing card. Try to get uh, your hand on a playset of these because I would say she uh, she's super good in every Charlotte build. So definitely, definitely already double R worthy. And she has a pretty awesome first effect as well. Uh, she has the whole stop swap, stop, blech, stock swap shenanigan. Obviously, when you play her, you put a, the top card of their stock to the waiting room, and then you should put a climax in there. That way, you force them to pay it out in some shape or form. And if they can't pay it out, that's awesome. You can uh, then it just stays stuck there, and then they'll have to pay it out eventually. And if they never pay it out, then of course they're playing with one less climax essentially, which is always super good. So yeah, overall, I you mean. Uh, early stages of the game, very awesome for her on play ability and her stop swap ability. And then later into the game, uh, mid to late game, still really good for the stock swap ability. So overall, Ayumi, definitely double R worthy. Definitely super good. Anyways, let's go on to the next card. Uh, this guy, he's uh, not as conventional as his sister. Definitely uh, much different. There's a lot of weird things about you. But I don't think that makes him a bad card, so let's get to him. 3 2 10k double R, something important, Otosaka Yu, superpower, and student council, of course. Uh, this character gains minus one level in your hand if your opponent controls a level three or greater character on his or her stage. Next, the character gains this character gains power plus X, where X is the total level of character cards in your opponent's memory multiplied by two thousand. And lastly, when the climax name, the sound you hear someday is placed on your climax zone, and this card is on the center stage, select one of your opponent's character. During that, okay, during this turn, uh, the chosen character gets minus 5k power and the following ability of when this character is placed to reverse by battle, send it to memory. Uh, before we get more to him, I like to mention that uh, because the entire list is out, because I'm really late on this, um, he combos with the gold bar right here. The sound you heard sometime, uh, name's a little different, but just translations, and yeah, gold bar. Oops, so he definitely combos with the gold bar, so that's really good to know. And also, so yeah, he does combo with the gold bar, which is always good. So anyways, his first effect, uh, the character, he loses one level in your hand if your opponent controls a level 3 or greater on his or her stage. Uh, not too hard of a condition nowadays, especially like so many sets can bring out level 3s and level 2s. That's usually like what's really popular nowadays, so against a lot of relevant series, he can come out at level 2 because a lot of strong decks bring out level 3s at level 2. So that's really good. But also, it's pretty matchup dependent. His first condition just depends on what you're playing against. But there is a card that helps him, that helps him not become so matchup specific. The one being this Lunch Alone Nao Tomori. 
zero zero fifteen hundred. Um, she's a five hundred global for superpowers, and she has an, a great startup ability where you can put her to rest. If you do, choose another character, and that character takes plus one level for the turn. It says choose another character, so you can give any character plus one level. So I'm sure you guys can obviously see you use it. In, you use level three you in conjunction with the level zero now. So if your opponent has a level 1 on the field, you can just use a level 0 now, tap, give that character plus 1 level, and if you have another level 0 now, tap, give the char same character plus 1 level, and now you made a level 1 into a level 3, and then you can play level 3 na uh, you, and uh, you fulfilled his condition. So with multiple nows, or with just one now, you can make an opponent have a level 3 on the field, that way you fulfill the condition for you. And I think that makes him really awesome. Like, if this level 0 now wasn't here, I would be like, eh, you is okay, like he's super matchup specific, but because this now is here, it makes this the playability of you skyrocket. And it's not like you're hurting your deck if you're writing this now. This now, as a standalone card, is really good as well because she's uh, 500 global and that's really good right off the bat. And plus her rest ability to give a character plus one level is pretty good too. You can dodge suicides with it, you can, ironically, give an opponent's character plus one level, so if you want to side for like one damage instead of two or something, you can do that as well, which is pretty funny, but uh, just something to keep in mind. So now alone is a great card, uh, so you're not hurting your deck if you're running now, so I think the U, I think level 3 U's playability skyrockets in conjunction with the level 0 now. So essentially his first condition can be met in any matchup, so long as you have enough level 0 nows on the field, which should be easy enough to get by the time you're level 2. So level three you can come out at level level three you can come out at level two fairly easily against everything. Uh, his second condition is pretty weird. Uh, he gets power plus X, where X is the total level of character cards in your opponent's memory multiplied by two thousand. Do keep in mind it says character cards. It doesn't work with events. So like if you're up against Nisekoi and they have pendants of promises in memory, you won't get the four K boost because it specifically must be characters. And this can be a little difficult to accomplish. Like if your opponent's deck doesn't send itself to memory, like if they don't have cards that send themselves to memory, then uh, he can't really get this effect. But against certain matchups, it can help, like your opponent might send their own characters to memory, just depending on what they're, what, like, they're playing, like for example, uh, trying to think of some newer series that send their own characters to memory, but I can't really think of any, so I guess I'll go to or older series. An example would be like Angel Beats, the 2 to 3 Unique Bay change uh, from the extra booster. Uh, she sends herself to memory, it's a 2 to 3 change. So the level 2 can send itself to memory and then you would get plus 4k. Not like many people run that change anymore, but it's still, it could, like, that could happen. Also, um, the railgun changers, the 2 to 3 railgun changers, like Accelerator, um, Uiharu, and Misakuro, they do send themselves to memory. So if you're up against a deck like that that sends their own cards to memory to change, then yes, his second condition can be met. However, most of the time, I would say against most decks, you will have to rely on his climax combo to send your opponent's character to memory. And I think his climax combo is fairly interesting. I think there's a lot of uses you can do with his climax combo. So when you play the uh, when you play the gold bar, you select one of your opponent's character and it gets minus 5k. And when it dies, it gets sent to memory. Or when it dies by battle, I should say. So I'm sure many of you guys do know, but just in case, I'll reiterate. Uh, if a character in white shorts hits zero power for some hits zero or lower power, that character will kill itself. Uh, usually, or back then, a couple years ago, the most relevant case was Wing Slayer. But nowadays, since Disgaea hasn't been like in the meta, hasn't been relevant in the meta lately, so a couple people might for, have forgotten. Or if you're newer, if you're a newer player, then you might not know. Because it doesn't happen that often in white shorts, but yes, do keep in mind if a character does hit level uh, zero or less power, it will kill itself. So with that in mind, you can use his climax combo to actually kill a card for free. And do keep in mind he, he can't target any character on the field and give him minus 5k power. So you can target your opponent's back row, and most a lot of time characters in the back row like level assists, uh, like. 1k globals, brainstorms, 5 general front assists are generally really really low power. So most of the time if you activate use climax combo and use the minus 5k on an opponent's back row character, most of the time it will probably kill itself because like I said a lot of assists have low power. Even level 3 assists I believe have low power. I think the level 3 Shidoe from Lock Horizon, I think he's 3k power? I really can't remember but I don't think he's 5k. So you can't, and you can't kill a level 3 assist with this, man that's really good. But anyways, uh, yes, do keep in mind you can kill your opponent's back row with this ability. However, 
uh, as the card effect states, uh, for the character to be sent to memory, it must die via battle. So if you choose, if you kill an opponent's character with the minus 5k ability, then uh, it won't get sent to memory. But So do keep that in mind. But I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing, and I'll get onto that later. So, uh, so hmm, how do I say this? So I think a very typical example you could use, uh, use Climax Combo would be like, when you play the gold bar, you can generally guarantee two winning fights with just one, uh, with just playing by just by playing the gold bar, and I think that's really good. Like if you have a level three U in the front and two level one characters, and let's say your opponent has a level three in the front and two level one characters, uh, you can play the you can play like the gold bar, give minus five K to the opponent's level three character, and minus five K is a pretty huge amount of power. Like let's say your opponent's level three is ten K, and then you give it minus five K then your opponent's character will be 5k power. Let's say you have a level 1, it's let's say 6k base, let's say 6k after assist, you play the gold bar, 7k. Um, let's say, so now that your opponent's level 3 is 5, or your level opponent's level 3 is 5k, and your level 1 is 7k, you can try to kill it, and if you do kill it, you get to send it to memory. So, the point I'm trying to state is that the character that you give the minus 5k power to, you can kill it with another character. And if you do kill it with another character, then you will get the power boost because when you kill that character, when you kill the character that's targeted by use ability to get sent to memory, then use ability will automatically kick in and he will gain the extra power boost. If you send like a level 2 there, then he gets plus 4k. If you send a level 3, then he gets plus 6k and then he'll be 16k, which is pretty ridiculous and I don't think most sets can uh, put up a fight against that. So with like his climax combo, I think you can see that you can generally win two fights with just by playing the gold bar. One fight because of the minus 5k power and the second fight because then you will get a huge power boost so I think you can use it like that. Also you can attack in that order to dodge uh, anti-change backups like if let's say you targeted your opponent's level 3 with uh, use climax combo and then you try to kill that opponent's level 3 with you if you're level 2, which is going to be pretty relevant because, uh, you know, he can come out of level 2. If you're level 2 and then you try to attack your opponent's level 3 with level 3 you, and then they anti-change you, then you will die, and then your opponent's character live, and at the end of the turn, he will get his 5k power back, and it doesn't get sent to memory. So you kind of, like, completely, you kind of lose out on the climax combo, which really sucks. However, if you give the minus 5k power with you to the level 3, and then you are man able to reverse it with a level 1 character, they can they can still anti-change your level 3 you, but at least your level 1 will successfully reverse your opponent's level 3, and then it will get sent to memory. And then at least you at least at least you accomplish killing your opponent's level 3 and sending it to memory, so that way later in the future turns when you play le future level 3 use, then you can gain the power boost. It can be a little difficult for your level 1s to kill an opponent's level 2, via like anti-change or or uh, via battle even after the 5k just because of like uh, you know backups but I'm sure it's possible so just something to keep in mind I think uh, attacking I think uh, attacking in that order like attacking an opponent's level 3 with a lower level character as opposed to level 3 you would be pretty good if your opponent has an anti-change backup because that way you can at least send that character off to memory so I think what uh, so I think the final point I want to mention is after you sent, after you after you sent a good like one or two characters to memory, uh, when you're satisfied with how much power you has, I think you should stop using his climax combos to start uh, send characters to memory. Because if you send too many of your opponent's character to memory, then they start compressing too much. Like don't keep spamming his climax combos and keep sending your opponent's character to memory, because that will increase their compress, and then over the long run you're actually helping your opponent, and you're doing more harm to yourself. Like uh. Yeah, so once you has like 14k power, 16k power, I think you could stop using his climax combo to uh, get more characters in memory. Once he hits 16k, that's like impossible or really difficult for most decks to stop, or most decks to put up against. So once you like have enough power on him, then I would say start using his climax combo to like a poke up your opponent's back row. Just give them minus 5k so they'll kill themselves. Like I said, if they kill themselves with the minus 5k power, they don't get sent to memory. And I, that's really awesome because then you don't have to send them to memory, and that way you can still kill your opponent's character with his climax combo for free, and you don't have to send it to memory, and so that way you don't increase your opponent's compress. So 
yeah, you can do it like that. And of course, if you have multiple U's, like if you have two U's, you can give minus 10k power to one card. And it can, you can probably kill like level 1's or level 2's. If you have three U's and then you play the gold bar and you put minus 15k to one character, then that will most likely destroy 99% of the cards in Y shorts. So, yeah, uh, I think there's a lot of uses to his climax combo. And I think he can come out very consistent, consistently at level 2, thanks to the level 0 now. So overall, I think U's are pretty... I think he's pretty good, and I think he's really interesting. However, the main, like the biggest problem I see with you is that he's, it's the level three lineup for Charlotte might be a little tight at this point. Uh, last week we saw four, uh, level three Ayumi, and she's a really good card, and she can come out at level two as well. And Ayumi is really good at level two, and she's really good at level three. You is good at level two, and he's he's all right at level three. So it's like, and next week, we'll see a level 3 now that's really good in green-blue. So the level 3 lineup might be a little tight. Like you might, because you're going to be running like, what, four Ayumis. Next week, there's a really good now. And you'll probably be running like two of her or three of her. Is there really more space for you? I don't know. We'll see. Uh, I think I think he's good, and I think he's a lot of fun. But... Like, you know, is there enough space for him? Ayumi's also really good. So, like, there's kind of a lot of competition he has to uh, go. There's a lot of competition in the level 3 lineup for, like, blue, green, Charlotte. And will you make the cut? I'm not too sure. Will he be as good? Like, is he worth running in comparison to the other level 3s? Who knows? I'm not too sure if he is. But as a standalone card, I think he's pretty cool. I think he's pretty great. So I think we'll just have to see. And I'm sure, you know, when I play against my friend Russell, uh, I'll see as well. But for now, I definitely think he has potential. And I think he's a pretty solid card. Very unconventional. Three really unconventional abilities. But I don't think that necessarily, necessarily makes him a bad thing. It's kind of weird. Like, level 3 Ayumi has, like, three super, like, common abilities. And, like, that makes her a very solid card. But her brother Yu has, like, three very unconventional abilities. And, like, I don't know. I still think he's pretty good. So I think it's kind of interesting. Uh, I'm really ho uh, curious to see uh, what people think about you and uh, if people actually run him or not. So I'm really excited to see that. But, like I said, my final thought, I think he's pretty cool. I think he's pretty solid. Next up, his bro, 00500R, The World Is Not Here, Otosaka Shinosuke. Shinusuke? Shin Shinsuke? Shis Shinsuke. Oh, that's a little weird. Superpower and time. Uh, 500 front assist, and when you play a green colored climax, choose a character you control, and that character gets plus 1500 power until the end of the turn. Uh, Shu is very similar to other cards we've seen, like the level 0 uh, Asuna, Asuna assist from the original SAO booster and the 00, zero uh, Chitoge assist that Nisekoi has, uh, the PR I should say. So, very similar to that, however, he's a bit more uh, specific because you must have a green colored climax for him to get a secondary ability to off however the upside is that you give an additional 500 power I don't think Shinosuke is bad I think he's a pretty solid card however I think he's a little overshadowed in this set because like I said of the level 0 now uh, generally I think blue green is going to be like uh, I think blue green is going to be a very solid deck and I think in blue green I'm I think this now I think this now is a lot better than this shoe just because of the plus one level ability and the fact that uh, you can use it in conjunction with the level three U to make him very consistent. And the, you know, like I said, the plus one ability is just uh, the plus one level ability is just very has a high has a good amount of utility attached to it already. So I think the level zero now overshadows the level zero Shinosuke. So because of that, I don't think he's going to be ran. I just if like in blue green, I think people are gonna choose the level zero now over this level zero shoe assist. So yeah, I think that's what's going to happen. I don't think he's. I think he's a solid card if you run enough green. Uh, if you run enough green climaxes, and the set already has a pretty good green climax combo in the form of the level three use of climax combo ability. Level three use climax combo is pretty good. So if you're running four gold bars, and since it's gold bars, really easy to get, you can spam level three shoes or level zero shoes uh, ability uh, a decent amount. 
and that's not bad at all. Uh, the more power your cards can have, the better, and it's costless, so that's really good. And last week we saw the level zero now that is dependent. The level zero now brainstorm that is dependent on a lot of power to gain the uh, brainstorm ability off. So the extra power I think is going to be really important in Charlotte, but I still think he's a bit overshadowed by level zero now assist. But we'll see. If if you're not running the level zero, uh, if you're not running the level three shoe, then I think you can go. Uh, if you run enough green climax. Uh, if you run enough green climaxes, then I would say this shoe is really good. But if you are running the level three U, then I would say you know just just play the level zero analysis because I think it's uh it just makes this U way too consistent. So overshadowed, but I think he's a as a standalone card. I think he's good if your deck can uh, get it to work. Next up, two one pizza sauce uh, Otosaka pizza sauce omelet rice. Uh, choose one of your Choose one character you control, that character plus gets plus 4k power until the end of your opponent's next turn. Then place this card to memory. Uh, once... Okay, sorry about that. I had to let my parents know not to disturb me. Anyways, um... So this pizza sauce event, we've seen this event. We've seen events similar to this time and time again. And they're not very good. Like, it's a 2-1... It's a 2-1... Blue event that all it does is get 4k power and it sends itself off to memory. Eh, not that good. I would prefer my events to have a bit more utility, like, you know, Nisekoi's uh, Yellow Pendant of Promise, Red Pendant of Promise, Madoka's uh, Saika's Heal event, 2-1 event for Madoka. Uh, you know, I would prefer, I don't, not a huge fan of events that just give power. And honestly, in this set, well, since the entire list is out, might as well spoil it. Where is it? Um, should be this one. Yeah, the set has a 1135 event backup. So there's not much of a point in a 214K backup when you have a 11 event backup that's 35. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it's uh yeah, this one's in yellow and you have to target a superpower character, but but bit whoop, everything is superpower in this damn set. And yellow is a pretty solid color in in the set already. So it shouldn't be too hard splashing yellow in your decks in the first place. So I really don't see a point in this 2-1 event. I think it's a total I think it's like a waste of a card slot in this set. Like it's like super disappointing. It's like what the hell's the point of this when we have a 1135 backup? Uh, it's just there's no point in this. I would say just stick to the 1-1 one, one yellow event. I mean, if you don't want to run yellow in like if you're running like blue green, then I guess you could just stick with this pizza sauce event, but I think I think at but I think like blue yellow green is would be really good as well and honestly I don't think you need this event backup because if you're running blue green then like Shu can hit or you can hit a huge amount of power anyways with this climax combo so it's not really necessary so I really don't think this card is necessary I don't really recommend running this if you really want to you can run one or two it's not the worst event ever but I personally don't like it and I would personally say you're better off without it Next up, 105k uncommon in a futon Otosaka Ayumi, superpower and pizza sauce. When this card declares an attack with the climax name, the end of the cruel fate in your climax zone, this card gains plus 1k power and the following ability. When this card reverses its opponent battle, you may gain a blind stock. And uh, the end of the cruel fate is this uh, two, plus 2 soul right here that really really reminds me of uh, Tokyo Ghoul. I mean, does that not look like Kaneki and the whole setting is Tokyo Ghoul? Anyways, so Ayumi... I think she's an okay card, especially for uncommon. I don't think you can really complain. Um, however, I think she has a lot of downsides to her. First of all, she combos with the plus two soul. Like we said, uh, like I said many times in this series, plus two soul always hit or miss. Uh, if, it, if, it, if the plus, if all the damage from the plus two soul sticks, great. You are you push her, you push far ahead in the damage race, and you put your opponent in a tight spot. However, your opponent triple cancels, and it can you minus one card in your hand. To like really don't do much, but I mean you can the plus two soul debate can go on forever and ever and ever. But I'll just leave it at that. Uh, it's nice. Ayumi gets the extra one k boost thanks to the her cli her climax combo. It's very nice. She gets the extra one k so that she can uh, gain more. So she, that way she's more likely to kill an opponent's character. And when she does kill something, you do get a blind stock. I mean it's not a bad climax combo. I would, it's not a bad climax combo. However, once again it's plus two soul. Two, you have to reverse your opponent's character, and Ayumi isn't that strong. She's only 106k base. And lastly, um, 
the stock you get is blind. And, you know, blind stock always hit or miss. If it's a climax, then you, like, have to pay it out. But since it's blind stock, you don't know if it's a climax. So you have to spend, you have to, like, you have to use a way to search your deck to look through it. And then, you know, then you can confirm it's a blind stock or not. So, you know, the blind stock, it's hit or miss. And most of the time, it can really hurt you. But I don't think it's a black. I don't think this card is bad at all. For an uncommon, I think it's really, really, really good. But like in a conventional deck, I don't really see people running this. Yeah, I don't really see people running this. I would say, just stick to more. I mean, okay. I don't know what to feel about this card. I don't think it's. I don't think it's bad at all. But I don't think it's good enough. So I. I'm. Like, I think there'll be better climax combos you can run. Like, if you're running, blue, like, okay, she's green. So if you're running green, out, and you want, if you're playing level 3 U, then you're going to run 4 of his gold bar combo. And next week, uh, we're going to see a really good now, and she combos with pants. So it's, it's like, blue-green's kind of already, like, 4 gold bar and 4 pants. So you don't really have space for this uh, plus 2. Like, are you going to give up those really, like, those really good climax combo for a plus 2 soul climax combo that might backfire on you? I don't really think so. I don't think that's really necessary. But I think I think this combo does have potential because um as we know, Charlotte does have the anti uh has Char Charlotte does have the anti burn uh level 0 U. And so if you're the Charlotte like Charlotte decks might come to a point where they might want to damage raise your opponent because they know like against their a lot of decks nowadays don't ha don't have a lot of heals like two level darkness. You they usually run what one two to three mecon, so they can't really heal. So if you push them really far ahead in the damage, then they can't really come back, you know. And they can't end game you because it's two level darkness. They have like zero way to fight back at level three, and they only have like two or three heals, and they don't have salvage. So it's gonna be really hard for them to lose survive. So maybe if Charlotte ends up being like a high damage deck, then this plus two soul climax combo wouldn't be too shabby at all. But as of right now, I don't think it's worth it. I think there's better climax combos than this. But I don't think this card is bad at all. So I'll leave it at that. Next up, Tuesday. More very interesting and difficult to explain. Level 3s for Charlotte. 3, 2, 9, 5, double R, something important, Nishimura Yusa, superpower and student council. Uh, so this card, for every superpower character you control, she gets plus 500 power. During your opponent's turn, when you, whenever you did not cancel any damage that was dealt to you, and this card is on your center stage, you can look at the top card of your deck and place it on top or put it to your waiting room. So, scry one, if you guys are familiar with magic. And she has a climax phase change. During the start of your climax phase, you can pay cost, which is put it to waiting room. Then you can choose one something important Misa, which is this level 3 right here. From your waiting room, and place onto the original border of this border of this card, and uh, yeah, and do keep in mind if this card is not present on your stage during your climax phase, you cannot activate this ability. I think I thought it was obvious, but I actually see a couple players asking about this, but uh, I'll get to that later. So do keep that in mind. Uh, I guess I'll first explain Misa three two nine five double R something important Misa superpower and death. Uh, when this card is placed from your hand or via change. You may heal. She climax combos with the climax love and fire, which is this climax rare gate. Uh, when she detacks with the uh, gate, you can pay three, and then if you do, deal five to your opponent. And lastly, she can change. So same thing. Uh, during the start of your climax phase, change or blick. During the start of your climax phase, you can pay cost, which is put it to waiting room. If you do, change it to something important, Nishimura Yusa, which is obviously the level three we first talked about, and then put it onto the original border of this card. And of course, once again, if this card is not present on your stage during the start of your climax phase, you cannot activate this ability. Uh, I guess I'll talk about this two one Yusa first, just because I guess it's pretty important. 2, 1, 4, 5 are moments in the student council Nishimura Yusa. Superpower and student council, of course. Uh, she's an R. She's a level assist in front. She has a climax, She has two climax phase changes. So very uh, reminiscent of the level 2 Kuroyuki Hime from Axel World. Oh man, Axel World. Anyways, uh, during the start of your climax phase, you can pay cost. Put her to, uh, you just put her to waiting room. If you do... Ch choose one Kurabana Misa from your waiting room and place it onto the original border of this card. Once again, if this card is not present on your stage during the start of your climax phase, you cannot activate this ability. We're going to cheat and we're going to find Nishimura or Misa Kurabane right here. The card she changes to is this 217k uh, 
uh, she does when this card attacks, if this card is at the level of the character opposite of this, is level 3 or higher, this card changes plus 4k and plus 1 soul. And she has a climax phase change back into the Yusa. I'm sure you guys get it by now. Uh, no cost, just put it to waiting room. However, her second change is... Uh, so during the start of your climax phase, you, you can pay cost, which is pay 2, ditch 1, if you do change into level 3 Yusa. So, man, where to start with this? Quite a mouthful, and uh, this is kind of the part where uh, I get lost in my explanations. I get all over the place, so I kind of want to keep this more focused, but uh, I'll do my best. Anyways, um, so as you can see, level 3 Yusa changes into level 3 Misa, and vice versa. Uh, do keep in mind that you can't, you can't constantly change. I've seen people asking, like, oh, can I play Yusa, heal to Misa, and then change to Yusa, heal to Misa, change to Yusa, change to Misa. No, no, you can only do one per climax phase. So... That doesn't mean you can't do multiple Yusas in one turn. So if you have two Yusas in the front row, yes, both of them can change into another Misa. However, if you have one Yusa, you can change into Misa, and then the same Climax phase, Misa changed into Yusa. No, you can only do one per Climax phase. So do keep that in mind, because that would be utterly broken if you can do that, because one card could heal you, potentially six, and that would be the most broken thing ever. But so, yes, do keep that in mind. Uh, thought it was fairly obvious, but, uh, you know, I guess it's not. Anyways, uh, so I would say Yusa, obviously she is. When you're at if you're not going if you're not going to climax combo, then obviously Yusa is the better card to have on the field because Yusa has fairly high power, has a decent amount of power I would say. With, uh, with a full field before assist, she is an 11-5, which isn't uh, which isn't too shabby. And whenever you take damage, you can scry one, which is look at top and leave it there, or put it to waiting room. So every time you take damage. Uh, you make it so that the next damage you take, uh, you have a higher chance of cancelling because uh, you are you are potentially putting one less damage on top of your deck to the waiting room. So definitely much better to have out if you aren't climax comboing because she has a higher body, making her more survivable. And two, uh, she makes it so that every time you do take damage, your next the next damage you would take, it will have a lower chance of actually sticking. So yes, she is the better card to have out when you're not climax comboing. So I would say, but obviously Misa is, but obviously they make it so that you want to change because you want to change to Misa whenever you can so that you get to heal. Because if you change from Yusa to Misa, then you essentially get a free heal, which is really awesome. But I think the downside about this whole change thing, shenanigan is that Misa is super weak. She's only 9-5 base. She's 500 power lower than the conventional power levels, you know? And nowadays, a lot of level 3s can hit high power, like uh, we just saw, level 3 U. Uh, what, Onodera, or I should say Kosaki from the first Nisekoi booster is a 10-5 base. Level 3 Maki from Love Live is 11k U most of the time. Um, Cinderella Girls, I think Anzu is pretty high powered, if I remember correctly. Um, what else? I mean, most level 3s that come out at level 2, and level 3s in general, at level 3 are pretty high power. Like, what, level 3 now we saw last week is 11k base, level 3 Ayumi is 10-5 base. Uh, the list goes on and on and on. So the fact that Misa is low power makes this whole chain shenanigan a little difficult to do, just because when Misa dies, the cycle ends. Because, you know, Misa has to live, so that way you, you can change back into Yusa. Because both of them have to survive one turn. Because if you play Yusa first, and then you change to Misa, if you don't climax combo, then all you have is a 9-5 on attack. 9-5 based on attack. So she's very weak, so she's very susceptible to dying via your opponent's backup. And she might even die from backups when you, like, if your opponent backups with a level 2, or even a level 1, she might even, like, die, you know? So she's really, really low power. So, so because of that, I would say if you're not, if you're not going to climax combo, I would say optimally, you would want to start with Misa. Because if you start with Misa, then you heal. Climax phase, you change into Yusa. And then since it's climax phase, now you get to attack. And you get to attack uh, Misa or Yusa's 11-5, ideally. And then um, then it's your opponent's turn. And if, if Yusa survives, and then you know they attack you, uh, Yusa makes it so it's like, difficult for them to you know actually deal damage to you. Every time you take damage, the next one becomes all that much harder, etc. etc. Very good on defense. 
Uh, do keep in mind the set does have a 1135 backup and it's in yellow, so you can use that with Yusa, so really good. And then next turn, just keep Yusa out and then climax phase change back into Misa. So for two stock, and then you change back to Misa, and then Misa will heal you again. So it's kind of like a heal loop, it's much slower, but it can be pretty stock efficient if you can manage uh if you can manage Yusa to live. And I think that's uh, I think Yusa has a if you start off with Misa, then change to Yusa and then change back to Misa, I, I can see that happening because Misa, Yusa is actually a, she's kind of difficult to kill, especially with a 1135 backup. So I think that's really good. So, and then, you know, but by the time you change into Misa, the, if you, when you change to Misa after Yusa, then it's kind of, I think the cycle will end there because at that point, Misa is only 9-5, so she might die on offense. And especially on defense, she's really weak too. So I think the cycle kind of ends there. So I don't really see the a Charlotte player constantly looping Misa to Yusa, just because Misa is so low power, and I think that's the huge. I think that's the biggest gap in this whole Wombo combo. I really wish Misa was at least 10k base. Like, come on, at least make her 10k base. But she has three abilities, so I guess that's the down. I guess that's why why she's only 95. I can see that, and yeah. So and uh, Misa has a pretty awesome climax combo. Uh, very similar to the Yukimura Sonata from Single Basada. I think it's exactly the same actually. Pay 3 with the gate and then deal 5. Mm, kind of expensive. Uh, like compared to like other Climax combos that other sets have uh, nowadays. I feel like this one's not that good. But it's not the worst thing ever. It's essentially you're paying 3 discarding a card because you have to play the gate and you have to pay 3 on attack. It's It's not bad. But, uh, you know, if the 5 sticks, you essentially won the game, because that's 5 damage at level 3. But, um, if it doesn't stick, hey, that's at least one less cancel that uh, your opponent has left. So, not too shabby at all. So, overall, I think if you, I think it's a pretty fun duo of cards. Uh, if you start off, I think the cycle, I think this combo is a lot worse if you start off with Yusa. Because if you start with Yusa, then you're kind of, then you don't really want to change, well, like, if you start with Yusa... You change to Misa, you heal, and then Misa has a good chance of dying. It's like, oh crap, Misa died. Cycle's over. You kind of just pay 2 to heal. And that's not that great. But if you start with, and then, yeah, so the cycle ends there. But if you start with Misa, then change to Yusa, then change to Misa, then you pay 2 stock to heal twice. It's really slow, but hey, you pay 2 stock to heal twice, and you had a... Uh, you had a pretty decent chance, and you know, Yusa might have helped you survive and might have helped you cancel more. So, yeah, I would say definitely, 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 if you can, start with Misa if you're going to do the whole, like, loop change thing. If you're going to loop the changes. Starting with Yusa, I think it's pretty bad, but starting with Misa, I think it's really, really, really good. But I think what's even awesomer about all this is you can potentially do this at level 2. Because you do have a changer into the level 3 Yusa. Kind of a bummer that uh, Yusa... Oh no. Oh, that's so good. I just realized. Oh, that's crazy. Okay, so like I said, uh, Yusa can change into Misa. Oh, that's awesome. Oh, damn. Anyways, so you can potentially get this Rockin' at level 2. At level 2, you can play the uh, level assist, change into Yusa, change to Misa. Uh, Misa will heal you. If you're doing this as a level 2, it's not as bad starting with Misa because uh, it's she's 9-5, yes, but at least your opponent's level 2. And if they're level 2, uh, you know, if you're level 2, hopefully your opponent's level 2 as well. And if that's the case, then maybe they can kill Misa. And yeah, the set still does have a 1 1 3 5 backup. So at level 2, that might be difficult for your opponent to deal with. So. Uh, you can't get this rocket at level 2. Like at level 2, imagine, uh, play the level assist, change it to Misa, heal. Next, uh, you can't change it back into Yusa because, you know, like I said, during the start of your climax phase, you can't, you can't do that because you missed the timing already. But you can change into Misa, next turn, you can change into Yusa, the next turn after, change into Misa. You can get a lot of heals off at level 2 potentially if you change from two, uh, the level assist to Misa at level 2. So, I think, and I think that would be really fun and really annoying for your opponent to deal with. If your opponent doesn't have an anti-change backup, then that can be really frustrating to deal with. Like, your opponent constantly healing at level 2, man, that's just freaking annoying. But I think, but I think that's the fun part about this. 
how practical will it be from changing from Yusa level 2 to level 3 Misa and then constantly doing this? Mm, who knows, we'll have to see, but I definitely think it does have potential. Of course, also the big, lastly, the like probably the biggest downside to all of this is that, you know, you change from the waiting room and you might not have one of them in the waiting room. If you don't have the other pair in the waiting room, it, or I should say if you don't have the other sister in the waiting room, obviously you can't change. That's not too bad, you know, maybe sometimes you don't want to change back into Misa if you are Yusa, if you're Yusa and you, maybe you don't want to change back into Misa just because you have like zero clock or you just don't want to, then that's perfectly legitimate. So there's that. But, uh, you know, Charlotte does have some discard outlets, like we saw the the two one the zero zero now brainstorm. You search two and discard, and so I think the discarding aspect of now is a lot better now in this series because the the change in this series is from waiting room, and because the level zero now brainstorm makes you discard a card, you can use like you can use it in conjunction with uh, the sisters when you change to get the change target into the waiting room after you search them out. So, uh, you know, there are you know, the da there is a downside where if you don't have the other sister in the waiting room, just because maybe you just refresh, then you can't do the change. But I think there are cards in Charlotte that can help, uh, you know, make it so that there is a change target in the waiting room more. Like, for example, the level 0 now brainstorm we saw last week. And later in this week, we'll see another card that can get cards uh, from your hand to the waiting room. So that way it makes the change more uh, practical. So overall, uh, to sum it up, I think uh, the, I think, I don't think this is the best combo ever. Like Yusa to Misa, Yusa to Misa, Yusa to Misa. I don't think it's like, I don't think it's super OP. I don't think it's that like that strong. But I think it's pra I think it's practical. I think it's not that bad. But and you know most importantly, you know debatably most importantly, I think it's a lot of fun and it definitely fits the. You know, it's very fitting of the sisters to have this, and I think it's super cool. And I think it's really fun having a Yusa Misa deck. I think I I can I can see a Yusa Misa deck happening, like level three lineup, run three Yusa, run three Misa, and run two level three Nows that we saw in the first week. And I think that's a pretty awesome level three lineup. You got some pretty good healing. You got some pretty scary end game ending in conjunction with Now and level three Misa, and you have a pretty defensive, pretty decent defensive option with Yusa. So I can see that level three line lineup uh, being very practical. Maybe like three Yusas, four Misas, and two Nows. I think that's better actually. So four Misa, three Yusa, two Now. I can see that being really good. So yellow red, I can definitely see being a thing. And I think the sister, I think these two sisters are pretty good and pretty practical and a lot of fun. So I'm really excited to see uh, if the sisters deck becomes a thing. And if it does, I, I'm curious to see how good it will be. So, really excited, and uh, I'll leave it at that. I think I'm ranting about the sisters long enough. 40 minutes, and I'm only on day two. Oh, man. Anyways, 2-2, two, two, 9k, common success. Takajo Jojiro, superpower, and student council. Uh, man, Jojiro, man, he just gets all the crap cards. Uh, he can't side attack. Oh, whoop de doo When this card is placed from hand to stage, you have four more other superpower characters, you gain a stock. Uh... I highly don't recommend running this card. Level 2, you have level 3 Ayumi that could come out of level 2. At level 2, you have level 3 Yu that come out, can come out of level 2. I guess you can debate that uh, he's in red. If you're not running blue or green, then you don't have much better level 2 options. But I think I think you should I think you're better off with 1-0s than playing this 2-2. Like this 2-2 I mean, he's a common for a reason. He's not good. 2-2, uh, 9k, and he can't side attack, and all you get is a blind stock if you have four more superpower characters. He's low power, and he's probably going to die next turn, and so in the long run, you pay too much stock for a very mediocre character, That's and yeah, that's going to hurt you more in the long run. You're better off not playing this. So uh, rec I recommend zero Jojiro's, burn him, like how Misa would burn him. Anyways, 2-2 two, two event. Uh, you said any magic spell series 13, the spell of reconciliation, reconciliation, black. Anyways, choose up to two characters in your waiting room and return them to your hand. So very, um, un very common event. We've seen this event in like a million series. What Law Cries and has it, uh, Love Live has it, uh, Guilty Crown has it, 
and I'm sure there's a million more that I can't think of. But these 2-2 two -two event that salvage two characters, oh, kill a kill has it, 2-2 uh, event backup, or 2-2 two -two events that salvage two, definitely not bad at all. Uh, if you want to run them, then, then by all means you can run one or two of them. Definitely not bad. Can definitely save you in a pinch and can help you set up your future turns. Uh, plus, you, plus this you won, and you can grab any two characters in your waiting room, which can be really strong. But definitely not like staple in any deck. I can't think of any deck where it's like staple. Maybe Log Horizon, just because they don't have that many level 3 Akatsukis. So, yeah, definitely not a staple card. But if you want to run one or two, then by all means go ahead. Definitely wouldn't hurt your deck at all. Uh, but it wouldn't hurt your deck, wouldn't benefit your deck if you run it. But it wouldn't hurt your deck if you didn't run any, you know? So definitely a player's choice card. And uh, it's really it's a very solid card. So by all means, if you want to run one or two, then uh, feel free to do so, because it's pretty good. Next up, Now's Day 104K Rare Cool Beauty Tomori Now Superpower and Student Council. Once again, uh, when this card is played from hand to stage, she gets power plus X, where X is number of superpower your character she control multiplied by 500. She does include herself, so with a full field, she will be a 1065. Next up, as you can guess, she climax combos with this Wind Trigger right here. Uh, when this card attacks with the Wind Trigger, you may choose an opponent's character and return it to the, its owner's hand. And once again, the Wind Trigger is a climax common. Climax common, I'm, uh, I'm kind of surprised. Damn, this climax is really cute. Okay, anyways. Uh, now, I think she's a fairly solid card. I don't think she's the best card, but I don't think she's that bad. Full field, well, like I said, 6-5. Uh, 6-5 power, not that bad, however she's like, she's stupidly weak on defense, only 4k, but, you know, not that worst of the, not the end of the world, you play her, you attack, she gets her job done, that's it. Her climax combo, it's, mm, I mean, it's okay, not the greatest climax combo, uh, I don't think it's bad, and I kind of like it. Because when you attack with the Climax, it's free, and you get to bounce any opponent's character on the field back to their hand. So, and you know, like, bounce? Bounce is good. Sometimes it's like, there's no point, but most of the time, it could be pretty good. I mean, at the very least, you can bounce your opponent's back row characters to their hand, just to make it so that uh, you can successfully reverse more of your opponent's character. A lot of times, especially nowadays, a lot of level 1 games, a lot of level 1s in, like, stronger decks don't have cost, they're generally they're generally costless cards, and there's not much of a point bouncing a costless card back to your opponent's hand. Uh, you could do that just to like get it out of the way, if you can't kill it, just so you can direct attack. But if that card has like, you know, an on-play ability, then that's really bad. So, this Climax combo, it's... It can be really good in certain matchups, like depending on how stock depending your opponent's deck is. It can be really good, I guess, like, you can, if you're up against Rewrite, you can bounce their 2-2s two Akane when, if they play them at level 1 and they can't pseudo-encore that shit. And, you know, it can be really hard for your opponent to deal with. You're up against, like, Vivid Red and they're running the 2-1 Vivid Blue at level 1, then once again you can bounce that. So against, like, certain matchups it can be really good, but I'm sure against a lot of matchups where most of your opponent's deck is consisted of costless 1-0s, like what? Index... Madoka, uh, SAO, Nisekoi, um, I mean, I just can't think of any more, but the list goes on. So against a lot of matchups, it's not that great. Uh, at level 2, you can bounce like your opponent's early play level 3s. De just depending on what the condition is, it can be frustrating for your opponent. So for that reason, for that aspect, it might be good. Like if you're up against SAO, you bounce the level three Kirito back to their hand, and then if they have too many climaxes, then they can't play him anymore. So that could be really good. But if you're up against like Nisekoi, and then you just bounce a level three Onodetta, it's like oh derp, whatever, play again, search, and uh, you know that's that could happen. And against and at level three, if you bounce your opponent's level threes and they have on play abilities, then it's like whatever. Thanks for the on play ability again, and that would suck. So. I mean, yeah, there's a lot of good stuff. I think it's pretty good. Okay, let, let me restate. I don't think this Climax combo is bad, but I don't think it's very necessary. Like, maybe if the meta, if maybe sometimes in the future when the meta is, like, if the meta is filled with, like, level 2s at level 1, or if the meta becomes, like, cost, what like, 1-1 one, one characters become popular again, 
then maybe this will become very good because if you constantly bounce your opponent's 1-1 one, one characters, that's like super good. You just make your opponents constantly we uh, waste resources to play their 1-1s. One, that could be really good. But as of right now, like the meta is so costless and when level 3s can come out easily at level 2 and when level 3s have really scary on play abilities like level 3 Musashi, you're kind of helping your opponent out. And, or or it's like you bounce and you don't get that much benefit out of it. I would say you could be running better climax combos. And if you really wanted bounce, I think you could just get away with running four wind triggers and not running any of these. And I think that's an acceptable amount of bounce already as it is. Like, do you really need that much bounce? You're already running four wind triggers. Like, if you run four wind triggers, how much more bounce do you need? Like, do you need an on-demand bounce? Maybe. Not bad. It's Like, maybe you could. So, I think the best part... Mm. The part that doesn't make this climax combo like completely bad is the fact that now herself is a pretty decent card. I mean, if you play her, she's a 1065. That's not that bad. So this, like, for that reason, I don't think this climax combo is too bad. But I personally don't think it's very necessary. And I think you could get go away with better with running better climax combos and running better 10s. So yeah, I, oh, man, I've talked about this card way too long. Overall. I'll just, okay, final opinion. I don't think it's really necessary in today's meta, and I think if you want to bounce, you could just get away with running four wind triggers and maybe one or two nows, and I think you'll be okay. But definitely not, I don't think it's going to be stable in any build. If you want to run it, I would say run one or two, and I think you'll be okay. Okay, I'll leave it at that. Next up, more solid 1-0 nows. 1045 are challenging the present Tomodi now superpower and student council. Uh... Continuous ability for every superpower character you control, this card gains plus 500 power. So very, 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 very common ability we've seen by now. It seems like every set is getting these 1-0s that get 500 per character. I remember when Love Live had it, and it was like super awesome, like three years ago. It was like, oh my god, 1-0 Eddie, 7-5, no cost, OP. But now it's like every set can do this, so it's like, uh, bummer. Anyways, um, what, full field, 1-0-6-5. Hits solid numbers for a no cost character. Um, these 106, these 10 that get 500 per have proven to be solid throughout the years. Now should be no exception. So if you're running blue, definitely consider two or four. Two, I would say three or four of these nows for your level one lineup, and you definitely cannot go wrong with that. So definitely a very uh, much welcome addition to Charlotte. 2155 uncommon exploration Tormody now superpower and student council. Uh, She's a 1k global for superpowers, and you can pay 2, put her to rest to draw a card. Uh, I don't think this card is too bad, but I don't think it's the greatest. It's a 1k global, and 1k globals are really good if your level 2 game is... If you don't have much of a level 2 game, like if your level 2 game is focused around continuing your level 1 game, like uh, 2 Love Your Darkness. 2 Love Your Darkness does not have much of a level 2 game. And in that aspect, a two, uh, 1k global is better than a level assist, because if you level assist your level 1s, it's not that big of a deal. But a 1k global for your level 1s is really good. However, Charlotte at level 2 have some really strong abilities, or have some really strong options at level 2, like the 3-2 Ayumi or the 3-2 uh, Yu. Now, if you're running blue, I would say you should be running green. So... Uh, I think a in this, I think for Charlotte, a level assist would be the better assist of choice because uh, they have really good level threes that can come out at level two, and uh, Charlotte is pretty power dependent just because of the level zero brainstorm, uh, the level zero brainstorm now. So for that reason, I would say in this set, uh, a level assist is better. So I think this card is not that good. Uh, I mean, as a standalone card, it's not bad, but I think in this set, a level assist is more necessary. So I would say run a level assist instead. Next up, Dog Days. Man, I don't know much about Dog Days, so I deeply apologize if I miss something important. And I had I never seen a single episode of Dog Days, so I don't really understand what's going on here. But I will do my best. 002K Double R, so the first Double R, and like I said, it does have the Double R rarity, much like Lock Horizon. Animal and Music. Oh, okay, they have Music. That's cool. Uh, when your other characters are reversed in battle, choose one of your Animal or Hero characters. It gets plus 500 power until the end of the turn. Uh, it's called Dog Day, so I assume animals. I assume every character's animal. So the first effect seems really good right off the bat. Anyways, it is a brainstorm. So pay one, tap two, mill top four for every climax amongst those. Uh, choose one character in your waiting room and return it to your hand. Uh, this brainstorm seems to be really good 
Uh, her first ability is already really good. It's like the level 0 uh, Yudipe from Angel Beats, the assist, the 500 global assist, and that and this effect can be really annoying. If your opponent is not wary, they can misplay and they might not be able to uh, re re uh, successfully reverse all your characters on your field. And in just some situations, your opponent can't play around this. And so overall, the extra 500 every time an opponent's character, every time one of your characters get reversed, is pretty awesome. So, pretty awesome first effect. And I'm assuming Animal and Hero is a pretty big trait in the set, so I'm assuming it can hit most characters, so I think that's really good. Uh, the Brainstorm is really good as well. I don't think Dog Days had a plus Brainstorm in the first and second booster. I believe they don't have a plus Brainstorm, so the fact that this is a plus Brainstorm, I think it's really good because they finally have a plus Brainstorm. So, you know, if your set has a plus Brainstorm, like I said many, many, many times, uh, run, run three or four of them because... Plus Brainstorm is awesome. And uh, this Plus Brainstorm is even awesomer because it's un there's no trait restriction. You can choose any character and return it to your hand, like the level 0 Nana. Uh, I'm not too sure if uh, Dog Days have trait uh, problems, kind of like how uh, Two Lover Darkness does. They're kind of trait orientated. I'm not too sure how trait orientated or trait specific this set is. But the fact that this card can grab any character is really good and a really good plus. So a good pl a first a really good first ability, and with a really solid brainstorm ability, I would say this card is definitely double R worthy. Next up, we have this interesting uh, two one blue event backup. Um, I believe I don't believe uh, Dog Days had blue in the past. I believe they only have red, yellow, and green. So I guess this booster will introduce blue to them. So. That's nice. Having an extra color in your arse in your set is always good. So two one blue event backup an R <laughs> an R event. How often do we see that? Anyways, uh, you may discard one. So it's a backup. You may discard one hero crystal from your hand to the waiting room. If you do, choose one battling character and it's the falling ability until the end of the turn. Or this card cannot deal any damage to players. So this is an anti damage backup, obviously, and this one is a fairly interesting one. Usually anti damage backups are pretty. Ex are kind of expensive or have some weird condition tied to them. Like Compass has the mill 3, which is really good, but I won't get into that. So Compass has like that condition. Uh, the Little Buster's da uh, anti-damage event backup, it's what, 2-3. So it's pretty stock heavy, and the 2 Lover Darkness one is a 3-3, three, three, and that one's pretty heavy. And uh, the one in Milky Homes is just plain weird. I don't remember it, but I remember it being pretty strange. So this one, cheap but it does have some weird condition tied to it, but it's not too hard to accomplish. All you have to do is discard another Hero Crystal card from your hand. So obviously, if you're running this anti-damage backup, I would recommend running four of it, because, uh, you know, just to make it more consistent. And anti-damage is anti-damage. Anti-damage wins games. Uh, clutch anti-damage. If your series has anti-damage, you, you should try running one or two of these. Uh, like I said, Dog Days hasn't had blue in the past, so if blue doesn't end up being that strong, then I guess this isn't that good, because uh, if you're not running blue, then you can't really use a blue event backup. But if blue does end up being really good, then uh, having an anti-damage backup for blue should be a very nice benefit. So as of right now, I would say this is a pretty solid anti-damage event backup. But it, it once again, this is the first time blue is introduced in the series, and if blue doesn't end up being good, then this card is going to be crap. So we'll have to see how good blue is, but as like I said, as a standalone card, I like it, and I think it's pretty good. Uh, you might get some dead hands if you're holding too many of these, question mark, but still, think it's good. Next up, more Charlotte cards. 215KR, Gazing at the Sky, Otosaka Ayumi. A 5k power, so you can kill this with something like you. Anyways, and you can even kill cards like... Oh wow, this is 5-5, five, five, so she wouldn't die to you. So I guess that's a plus side. Anyways, 215KR, Gazing at the Sky, Otosaka Ayumi, Superpower and Pizza Sauce, of course. Uh, she's a level assist in front, so like I said, I think a level assist in this series is more necessary than uh, a 1k global, so that's really good. And she has a pretty good secondary ability. Uh, once this card is played from your hand to the stage, you can pay cost, which is choose one of your characters, uh, which is, you can pay cost, which is place two of your characters from stand to rest. If you do, choose one of your characters against the falling ability until the end of the turn. Uh, when this card is reverse, when this card reverses its opponent battle, you may place a top card of your deck to your stock. Oh man, this her second ability is only on play. Ah, jeez, that sucks. I thought this card, I thought this was uh, any time during the game, like the one-one Onodetta assist in Nisekoi. Uh, I guess I was wrong. 
it's, uh, this one's, eh, this level assist isn't as awesome as I thought it was to be. Anyways, uh, Ayumi, level assist in front, right off the bat, pretty playable. Uh, her secondary ability, it's not too bad either. Uh, when you play from hand to stage, you can tap two. Generally, you're going to be tapping Ayumi and your other back row character. If you do, uh, one of your character gets the ability of when it reverses his opponent in battle, you can get a blind stock. Not too shabby if you manage to um, if you manage to play her and tap two of your characters and you manage to reverse your opponent's character. The blind stock pretty much pays for Ayumi herself, so Ayumi is essentially quote unquote a free level assist if you meet all the conditions. But of course, this might this might not always happen. Uh, you might your other character in the back row might not be tapped or might already be. If your other back row character is already in rest for whatever reason, like a prime example, you might want to brainstorm this turn with the level zero now. You might want to you might want it you might have done that earlier this turn, or you might want to do that later this turn. And if you do, you might not be able to tap two of your characters. So, and if you don't use her on play ability, then she's essentially a vanilla level assist. So that's kind of lame. So, yeah, there's that. So, uh, I mean, I'm 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 a free I'm a fan of like. Eh, actually, I won't say that. This Ayumi is okay. She's a level assist. Makes her playable um, on play if you meet the conditions. Uh, it's not like the most impractical. To get her secondary ability off, it's pretty practical. It should happen a lot of the time, but I'm, I'm, go but you know there are going to be times where you can't get her secondary ability off. And if you don't, then she's really just a vanilla level assist, and that's kind of bites. So, yeah. So, in the end, she's she's definitely playable. But I mean, there's the TD, uh, there's the TD U level assist. And he's a level assist, and you can put him to rest to give a character an extra 500 power. That you, I mean, it's only an extra 500 power, but I mean, at least after, at least as in compared to this Ayumi, this this Ayumi can get you a blind stock, but after that, she's a vanilla level assist. And if you don't manage to get her on play ability, then she's really just a vanilla level assist. However, the level, the level assist, uh, you from the TD can always keep giving your characters plus 500 power and get, having extra power in this set is pretty important. So maybe overshadowed by the brother in, from the TD as in a, for a level assist, maybe. I think it's player's preference. If you want to run this level, if you want to run the 2-1 Ayumi level assist, go for it. If you want to run the 2-1 U level assist, go for it. I don't think you can go wrong with your choice, but definitely I don't think she's the greatest level assist ever. She's okay. She's okay at best. 1045 R Homemade Lunchbox Otosaka Yu Superpower and Student Council. When this card declares an attack and we have two or more superpower characters, this card gains plus 2k and till the end of the turn. And lastly, he has Clock Encore. Eh, Yu is okay. Uh, very weak on defense, but obviously that's because on offense he can hit pretty decent numbers. On offense, he's a 1065. Still not that high of a number, still kind of weak, still definitely still in backup range against many, many, many level 1s. And like, if you attack with him, your opponent backs up, okay, clock yourself. Next turn, he's only 4-5. Uh, on your opponent's turn, he's 4-5. They kill him, clock yourself. Next turn, attack. They might back up, oh shit, clock yourself. You know, you, he's a little, he's a little too weak on defense, and on offense, he's not that strong either. So I really, I'm not a huge fan of this you. he's just... His, he doesn't hit the right numbers, and, and and yeah, he has Clock Encore, which is really nice, but if he doesn't hit the right numbers on offense or on defense, then you're going to be clocking yourself too much to get this U going, you know? Why not have, like, he's only 6-5 on offense, and like I said, if you're running green, you should be running blue, and for blue-green, like, we already have a pretty awesome 1-0, like this 1-0 now. I think she's a lot better than this U, and so I... I don't think he's good. I, I, okay. Uh, I don't know. Um, as a standalone card, I don't think he's that good. But we haven't seen that many good 1-0s in the set. Like, the only good 1-0 we've seen so far is his now. And, like, only having running only for this now isn't enough. You're going to need more 1-0s or more level 1 cards in general than this. So maybe people will run one or two of these in conjunction with these 1-0 nows, just because you you might need more 1-0s, or you might just really need to clock Encore. 
Uh, maybe the set can't generate enough advantage, so maybe the clock encore will be very important. We'll see. As a standalone card, I don't think he's that great. But depending on what else the series has has to offer, you know, you might uh, Charlotte players might be forced to run him. So, yeah, we'll just have to see. But as of right now, I don't think he's that good. I'm not a fan of him. I'm not a fan of this card. Anyways, next up, 0-0, zero, zero, Ayumi's classmate, Konishi, man, this bitch. Um, when she's played from hand to stage, she has 1,500 power until the end of the turn. Not bad. A lot of level 0s have this ability of on play, gain plus 15. Seen it time and time again. Uh, not, I don't think it's bad. Uh, hits the right number on play. However, um, the biggest downfall to this card is that she's traitless. Um, she didn't, she couldn't she at least get the Yandere trait? Is there even a Yandere trait in Y Shorts? I don't know, they could have made one for her because she's totally Yandere. Anyways, uh, not a bad card. Uh, she doesn't have any traits, so I mean, it might pose a problem for your, like, for your trait synergy, for your superpower synergy, or like if you want to use the 1-0 backup we saw last week where you need a full field of superpowers, this Konishi might screw you up. But uh, as of right now, like I, uh, we haven't seen that many good level zeros for blue green for Charlotte. I mean, yeah, we haven't seen that many many good blue green beaters for Charlotte. So if there does, if one doesn't come, then maybe this Konishi will be the card that the Charlotte players will have to use for the level zero beater lineup. Hopefully, there's something better because her not having a trait can hurt you in the later stages of the game. But as a standalone card, she's not bad. She's definitely playable. Next up, Ayumi, 1045, common, escape, Otosaka Ayumi, superpower and pizza sauce. You have two more superpower characters, she gets plus 1k, and you put two of your characters to rest to give her plus 2k power. So she's a 1055 base, essentially, because if you, her first condition is you only need two superpower characters, and that's ridiculously easy to accomplish. So essentially, she's a 1055, and you can put two of your characters to rest to put get her to 1075. Now, this card is not bad, and she's for a common... I think this Ayumi is really good, and she hits pretty good numbers. She's uh, 1055, and 1055 is not bad, especially since nowadays a lot of 10s are like 5k base, because a lot of 10s nowadays kind of climax combo, uh, or they're even 4-5, like what, Shimakaze is 4-5, uh, Tachibana is 5k, Chitoke is 6-5, but uh, whatever. Um, I mean, Guilty Crown, they usually hit 6-5 with the new level uh, 1 guy. A lot of times, uh, uh, decks are like 105k base or 1065 after like plus 500 abilities. The fact that Ayumi is 1055 base and uh, the fact that on offense she can hit 75, I think Ayumi is pretty good. Like, Ayumi hits the right numbers. On defense, she's pretty solid and on offense, she's pretty good. Unlike you, where he's weak on defense and he's weak on offense. Yeah, he's got the clock encore, which is really great. But like I said, if you keep clock encoring him, what's the freaking point of him? So I would say this Ayumi is a pretty solid 1-0. Yeah, pretty solid 1-0. I guess the only downside to this is that uh, you have to tap both your back row. And if you tap both your back row, you can't like brainstorm for the turn, which would be really bad. But if you don't plan to brainstorm for the turn, you can play one or two of these. You can play this Ayumi, and you can go to town. Of course, uh, you can't use multiple Ayumis in one turn because you have to tap two of your characters. So I would say Ayumi... Uh, she's a solid card, but definitely don't run too many in your deck, because if you run too many, it might actually hurt you. So, you know, for a blue-green level 1 lineup, maybe like 4 of these level 1 nows, and maybe 2 or 3 of these Ayumis. Maybe 2, I'd say go with 2 of these Ayumis. 3 max, definitely not 4. 2 or 3 of these Ayumis, and that's not too bad. Uh, in conjunction with the 1-0 green backup we saw last week, uh, it's not too shabby at all. So overall, uh, def wow, a really good common, a really good common, I'd say. And a pretty decent 1-0 beater, so I'll leave it at that. I definitely think she's playable. Next up, oh man, this Dongo scene. 2175 common, uh, Hardened Heart Otosaka Yu, Superpower and Student Council. During your opponent's turn, for every superpower character you control, he gets plus 500 power, so it'll be a 2195. Uh, when you play the Climax scenario, which is uh, this Climax common, what is this, a uh, blue stock one soul? When you play the stock one soul, and this card's in the front row, you can choose one of your opponent's character and move it to an empty border on your opponent's stage. So obviously you want to use his climax combo to put a level a back row character to the front. And so you can kill it. But I don't think he's that good. On offense, he's ridiculously weak. He's a two one nine he's a two one seven he's a two one seven five on offense. 
which is like it's too weak. Uh, it doesn't help that his climax combo doesn't give him any extra power, and the fact that the climax is a stock one soul, so he really doesn't get that much power. The only way you can boost him is by via your other card effects. On defense, he's only two one nine five, which is like whoop de doo. But like I said, for blue, uh, level blue has some great level two options already. Like for blue, you could just run three two Ayumi. If you're running blue green, which I highly recommend, you can run level three Shu or black. Why do I keep calling him Shu? You can run level three Yu. And that's and that's really good too. And level three you can kill back row characters. So level three you can kill back row characters. So you don't really need uh, a crappier. You don't really need a weak card with a weak climax combo to kill back row when you have a good card with a good climax combo that can ki that can kill back row as well. So overall, this you is this you is completely overshadowed by everything else in the set. And I highly recommend you run zero of him. What a waste of a Climax comment, or I'm sorry, what a waste of a Climax combo in this set. Next up, we got the Golden Ramen event. 2-1 uh, uncommon green event. Your opponent places all of his stock to the waiting room, then place the same number of cards from the top of his deck to his or her stock. So we've seen this whole stop swap events. Uh, we've seen these already. Or, or we've seen cards like this that can use this ability, like the level 3 Eddie can use this in White, uh, Love Life. Uh, there's a 2-1 event in Idol Master that can do that. If you saw my friend Domo, he did that of me on the channel, and I did like 15 stock. That was really annoying. Um, I think Decapo has a level 3 with this same ability as well, and I'm sure the list goes on, but I just can't think of any more. Uh, this whole stop swap event can be really devastating depending on uh, just depending on how the match is going. If your opponent has like a lot of stock that is clean, that you know is clean, like if they have 10 free clean if they have 10 clean stock you can play this 2-1 event and all that clean stock all their hard work goes to the waiting room and then they put the top 10 cards of their library to the deck or to the stock and of course since it's those top 10 cards we don't know what they are they can you can potentially hit a lot of climaxes and put them into the stock and that can be extremely devastating for your opponent I mean, this card is super hit or miss. I've had experience with this event just because my friend Domo plays it in his Idol Master deck just to be a dick. But, um, you know, there's been times where I've had like 10 free, let's say 10 free stock, 10 clean stock, I should say. He uses the event, I put all 10 to the waiting room, I put the top 10 back on top. Sometimes I hit like 5 climaxes and then he attacks, 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 and then I just eat it all and then I lose. It's like, oh wow, what a great way to lose. I got punished for playing the game very well. Like, it's kind of a shitty feeling, but I mean, well, I mean, every card game has, like, these really sacky cards, so it's kind of a sacky card. But sometimes, like, I have 10 clean stock, my Domo's like, okay, uh, all of it to the waiting room, 10 blind stock. Sometimes, you get lucky, and all 10 on the top is clean as well, and then it's hilarious, because then your opponent helped you increase your compress by a stupidly high amount. So, this event is extremely hit or miss. But I don't think it's bad. Uh, like I said, uh, it really depends on how the match is going. If your opponent has like no stock, like they have like two stock, it's like who really cares? Like it's not as it's really devastating when your opponent is doing very well. So, yeah, uh, definitely. I don't think it's. Hmm, I don't know. In Charlotte, it's a little different because in Charlotte, if you're running. Like I said, if you're running green, I highly recommend running blue. If you're running green, blue, and if you're running the anti-burn uh, you, the game can go down to the wire of, you know, just normally attacking. Like, you have to kill your opponent just by attacking constantly. You don't have any game ending. For, well, the Charlotte player doesn't have any game ending. Uh, doesn't have any game ending. Charlotte doesn't have any double attackers or clock shooters. So the Charlotte player has to win the good old-fashioned way via punching if you're running the level 0 you anti-burn. If you're running the level 0, you anti-burn, you want to, you know, deal as much damage to your opponent via attacking. And running this event might help you accomplish that. You might, uh, at the very least, if your opponent has a lot of stock, you might force them to refresh. And every damage they take, you know, leaves them that much closer to death. So you can, this card can force your opponent to take refresh damage. And like I said, you can, it can help you uh, kill your opponent by, uh, you know, just putting a bunch of stock from their deck to the climax or to the stock air, putting a bunch of climaxes from their deck to the stock and they can't really do a thing about it. So, I think in Charlotte it's a little different just because they play in a little more unconventional way than most decks. 
So in a Charlotte deck, I don't think this card is... I think this card has a lot of potential just because of how, how it can just steal a game and how you have to kill your opponent just by constantly beating them up via attacks. You can't just use your broke end game, end game. They can't really do that in blue-green. So I think this card has a lot of potential in Charlotte. I would say maybe run... I think you could run one or two in a blue-green deck, and it could be pretty good. But if you don't want to run any, then that's perfectly fine as well. Definitely, I would say a player's choice. Uh, a, a Definitely a player's choice card. But running one or two of these, I don't think you can go wrong, and it might actually be really good. So we'll have to see. Next up, more dog days that I have no idea about. 0, zero 1500 uncommon uh, leafs, relative, vert, animal, and weapon. So, okay, seems like animal is an important trait. So the brainstorm is really good. Anyways, uh, when this card is played from hand to stage, you can pay cost, which is discard a card from your hand. If you do, choose one animal character or hero character in your clock, add it to your hand, then you clock yourself one. So it's uh, very similar to the Mekon brainstorm in To Love or Darkness. Uh, this ability and she has an auto ability where this card, this effect can only be activated once per turn. When you play an event, choose one of your characters and it gets plus 1k. I'm not too sure how event heavy um, Dog Days is. Even if they are really event heavy, I don't think this card, like the 1k power, I'm not too sure how event heavy Dog Days is. So I can't really judge this card. But I mean, I could judge her first effect. So her first effect is really good. Uh, not really good. Her first effect is pretty good. Uh, you do the whole stock swap. Uh, pretty solid card. You discard a card. Oh, discard a character card from your hand. Jeez, never mind. I was going to say you can use this card to discard access, climaxes from your hand. But this card, you can only discard one character card. Oh man, that makes it a little worse. Hmm. And this verse okay. Uh, damn, that makes it go down a lot, a lot, a lot. Eh. I don't. Okay, this card is not bad. You can still grab a card from your clock and add it to your hand, and then you clock yourself. So, a pretty decent amount of utility, and it can help you like get rid of character cards you don't want in your hand and put it to the waiting room. And uh, every time you play an event, you give a character plus one k. So, I think she. I mean, she, her first effect is okay. I really don't know how good her second effect is, but I mean, she's. Eh, her first effect is okay. So if you run on one, run one or two of these. I don't think you can go wrong with that. Next up, 104k are Leafs, Lang, Dishar, Harva, <laughs> uh, Animal, and Royalty. When your other animal or hero characters can declare an attack, this card gets plus 1500 power, and she has a gold bar climax combo. When this card reverses an opponent character with the climax goal, which is obviously this climax here, uh, and the goal and the gold and you have the gold bar in play, you can choose one character from your clock, return it to your hand. If you do, clock yourself one damage. So overall, a really solid climax combo. A uh, really solid climax combo. Uh, costless level one climax combo that pluses, like I said a million times. Really good. If your set has it, you should generally consider it. Um, so with her, if you have one of her, and if your other two characters declare an attack first, she'll be a 107k. And when you play the gold bar, she'll gain an extra 1k. So uh, with her, if your other two characters declare an attack with her, uh, she'll be a 108k before. Um, before assist and that's really and that's pretty that's pretty respectable you know uh, that can you will probably be able to get her climax combo off with uh if your other two characters declare an effect attack and you plus and so that's really good so overall her climax combo i would say is very solid maybe the only problem is is like if you're trying to get multiple uh if you try to get multiple climax combos off it might be a little difficult because uh when your other hero, animal or hero characters declare an attack, she gets a boost. So if you have like three of her, then one of them has to be really weak. But uh, I think you can play around it. And you know, you can just kill an opponent's weak, really weak character, however have it. But anyways, overall, I think this is a really solid card. Not too sure how good the level 1 lineup for Dog Days was. But I think this is a very welcome addition, and I definitely think it's really good. And I definitely think it's very playable. So overall, uh, good card. Uh, good job, Leaf. Don't can't really say the rest of your name, but good, good, good card. And lastly, the final day. Wow, one hour and eighteen minutes. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Anyways, uh, last day. Zero zero one K R. Innocent look. Nishimura Yusa. She is a five hundred front assist for superpower characters, and she has a brainstorm where you can pay one mill top four for every climax amongst those. Search your deck for one superpower character. Show it to your opponent. Add it to your hand. Then discard a card from your hand and put it to the waiting room. So she's a good card. She's a 5 gen front assist, which is good. And she is a brainstorm. Uh, pay one, 
mill for search and then discard so spammable but i think it's the best spammable brainstorm uh in weiss or not the best i would say definitely one of the better spammable brainstorms you can get in white shorts uh search and then discard the search allows you to compress more and you could get anything back in your hand and you get to discard you get to discard excess climaxes but uh this was the card i was talking about when i was talking about the level threes how you know you might not have the change target in the waiting room however with the spammable brainstorm you can alleviate that uh, if you refresh then you can play this yusa or if she's already in the back you can brainstorm with this yusa if you hit one climax uh you know grab like level three misa put it to your hand discard level three misa because you could you can discard the card that you search so you can grab the change target discard the change target and now you can start going off with this combo so yusa a really good uh, she's a Yusa, all around a great card. A 500 in front assist, a very good spammable brainstorm, and on top of that, the uh, Rooks, I think it synergizes very well with the set because it allows you to dis discard, allowing you to change. So overall, a very excellent addition for Charlotte. Next up, 0 0 r Superpower and Student Council. Uh, when this card is played for hand to stage, reveal the top card of your deck. If that card is a Superpower character, add it to your hand and discard a card. Next up, when this card is placed from hand to stage, this card gains plus 1500 power until the end of the turn. Not too shabby of a card. She is uh, on play. She's a hand fix and a free hand fix on play. Always really good. Uh, definitely, you can run one or two of these. Uh, if your set has a hand fix, you can't go wrong with one or two of these. This card is no exception. Uh, you can definitely run one or two of these uses and you can't go wrong. And on play, she gets plus 1500 power. We haven't seen that many beaters in level 0 in general for all the colors, like for yellow, blue, green red i don't think we've seen that many level zero beaters so this card uh kind of a beater she's plus she gets plus 15 on play not bad so uh free hand fix and can act as a beater for one turn overall i'd say a fairly a fairly solid card mainly just for the hand fix really good utility all game next up 105k r shock nishimura yusa superpower and student council uh, well, this ability can be activated three times per turn. When your other characters are played from your waiting room to your stage, this card gains plus 2k for the till the end of the turn. So if you change three times in one turn, she'll be a 1011k. If you change once, 7k. If you change twice, 9k. Uh, I think it's a little too specific for my taste personally. If you're running a change heavy deck, if you're running a change heavy deck, which is obviously uh, the sisters deck, if you're running the sister sister deck. Uh, I mean, maybe. I'm not too sure how practical this is, but I honestly don't think it's that practical. Uh, like, yeah, a lot of the sisters usually change into one another, but that doesn't mean you always want to change into one another, and, and it doesn't mean you always, like, can change into one another. If you don't, if you're not able to change, then she's a pretty, she's just a 105k vanilla, and, like, even if you are able to change, she's only 7k, eh. She's a little too specific for my taste. I don't I don't think she's Okay, personally, I'm not a fan. I think she's a little too specific. But she might actually be playable in practice. Like, you know, if you're running a sister deck, just I can't like I I can't pers I don't know the entire list or like the most common build of a sister deck and because of that I can't really judge her if the sisters deck is managed to is able to change at least twice per turn at level one then I think this Yusa can be really good like if you change twice if you can consistently change twice at level one every turn then this Yusa is really awesome because she's a 109k essentially on attack and that's just and that's really strong but if you can't manage to if you can't manage to change at least once at level one consistently, then this Yusa is not that good. So we'll have to see like how the entire set turns out, and we'll have to see how practical it is to change constantly at level one. If it is, this Yusa is good. If it's if you can't, this card's not good. So we'll just have to see how the set goes. But I don't really think it's I don't see this card being that good. But like I said, we'll have to see how the rest of the set turns out. Uh, you know, I think this card may have potential. 1-1, one, one, transfer student, y Nishimura Yusa, superpower and student council. All your characters with change get plus 1k, so she's obviously orientated for the sisters deck. And she has another ability of when your other characters are played from hand to stage, you may pay cost, which is place one of your characters from instant to rest. If you do, choose one of your characters and get plus 1500 power until the end of the turn. She's okay for the sisters deck. Uh, she's a 1k global. 
uh, she's essentially a 1k global at level 1 for the sisters deck and that's pretty scary that can be really difficult to deal with and when your when your other characters are placed from your waiting room to your stage you can put her to rest and then or place any of your characters to rest and then you can give an additional plus 1500 power and that's a huge amount of power uh, she can potentially give 2 5 power if you change twice it says choose any of your one character so you can tap your other back row and then tap herself if you change twice in one turn and then you give what plus one five two times or you give plus three K to one character. So that's a huge amount of power. So overall, I would say uh, if you're running the sisters deck, I think she's a, I think she's really good. A one 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 K global, that is pretty intimidating. So really good. I yeah, for for the sisters deck, really good. And if you're running the sisters deck, you're going to change at least once or twice in the game. So and, and when you do change you can tap and then you can give an additional power, which is always welcome. So overall for the sisters deck, I think she's a really good addition. One O mission accomplished Misa superpower and death. For every other superpower character you control, she gets plus five hundred. So with a full field, she gets she's a one O six k. She has a pay one change. Pay one, put this card to waiting room. During the start of your climax phase, you can pay cost, which is of course one. If you do, choose one su transfer student Nishimura Yusa from your waiting room and place it on the original board of this card. Obviously, the transfer student Nishimura Yusa is the one one right here. Um. Well, you, Misa herself, I think it's okay. If you have a full, before with a full field before assist, she's 106k, which isn't too shabby. You can change into the assist. I don't think that's really necessary, and it's not bad. It's not bad if you change to the assist because uh, if you change into the assist, you're not losing anything. Unlike a two to three change where you have to pay two, two discard one, you're actually not losing anything because all you have to do is uh, pay one, and this card is a one one. So it's it's kind of it's exactly the same as playing a, this card from your hand to your stage. So her change isn't too bad. If you want to change into Misa Yusa, you can and get a 1k global. But I think the most important part is she's 106k with a full field. So 106k with a full field, that's very important. And she has to change text. Because she has to change text, she now works with the 1-1 one, one Yusa. And so if you have a full field with just one of these Yusas in the back, she's a 107k, which is pretty good. Let's say you have two Yusas in the back. Then she's a 108k, which can be really annoying for your opponent to deal with. Very reminiscent of uh, Juness, of the Juness decks with the 1-1, one, one, uh, what's her name? Uh, I forgot, but that, that girl was a bitch. But um, yeah, overall... Uh, I'd say a very welcome addition to the sisters deck because uh, she's 106k and most importantly she has to change text so she synergizes very well with her sister. So with just one Yusa in the back she's a 107k which is really strong. So overall uh, a fairly for uncommon I would say it's really good and makes the sister deck more practical because it has a pretty okay 1-0. Pretty decent 1-0. Next up, Glasses Guy. Okay, this Glasses, unlike all the other Glasses Guy, he, this one is okay. 1-0, um, 5-5, Uncommon. Summer Uniform, Takajo Jojiro, Super Power and Student Council. Like all of the Jojiro cards, he cannot declare a side attack. And uh, he climax combos with instant high speed with just 2, 2k1 here. When he attacks with the 2k1, you can pay cost, which is 1, if you do a uh, salvage a card. Joshiro is not bad. He's uh he's 1055, so he's a 500 power than your uh your conventional 10s that have a climax common. A little stronger, which is always nice. And his key climax combo is a 2k1. 2k1, not too shabby. Gives you that extra hand size and gives you the extra power you need. And his climax combo, it costs one. Kind of a bummer since a lot of climax combo nowadays don't cost one. But I mean his is guaranteed. You pay one and you salvage a character. Very simple. Overall, unlike all the other Jojito cards, this one is actually not... I think this one's actually kind of playable. 5-5. Um, five, five, combos with the 2k1, not too shabby. And you can just pay one and salvage a character, which can be pretty good. So overall, uh, not too bad of a card. Will people be running this? I'm not too sure. If you're running blue-green, well, that's blue-green, so you're not going to be running red. If you're running yellow-red, like if you're running the Sisters... In yellow-red, you're probably going to be... like If you're running yellow-red and if you're not running the Sisters then he can be pretty good. So, definitely I would say a playable climax comp, a uh, definitely a playable cl climax combo and for an uncommon, he's pretty damn good for an uncommon. So, overall, uh for its rarity, it's really good and it's uh it's very playable, I'd say. So, not too bad. Good job, glasses guy. Your first pretty decent card. 
And I believe this is the last few cards for Dark Days. Next up, 00, zero uh, Beloved Lord Co Covert. Double R, 500 power, animal and royalty. So she's a 500 global for heroes or royalty. Oh man, that kind of sucks. It doesn't work for animals. Hmm, not too sure how relevant that is, but 500 global. Wait, let me see. Is the yesterday's card royalty? Okay, really good. Okay, that's good. So she's royalty and she's music. Oh, bummer. No, oh, it doesn't matter. She's not a beater. Anyways, 500 global for heroes or royalty. I assume that's pretty good because it seems like a lot of these cards have royalty. So 500 global right off the bat. She's a shift for level 0, which is uh, pretty nice. You can get her back to your hand pretty easily. And lastly, uh, you can pay one, put this place this card to rest. If you do, choose one yellow character from your clock, return it to your hand. Then you uh, take the top two cards of your deck and put it to your clock. I think overall, I would say Covert is a fairly solid card. 500 global, always appreciated. Second of all, uh, she's got the shift. Not too sure how relevant shift is in this set. And lastly, um, you can pay. You're, it's kind of like you pay one, put it to rest, clock yourself, and then you add, and then you plus. So you plus one. But you pay one clock yourself, which is pretty good, which is really good, I should say. So, only downside is that uh, you can only get get a yellow card, and it has to be from your clock, so it can be a little like difficult depending on what color your deck is. It might not always, you might not be able to always grab anything, something, and even like the card you want to grab might not be good. So it can be a little specific depending on your deck build, but. Overall, it, should, it shouldn't be too bad. Overall, depending on your deck build, I think she's really good. So overall, a fairly solid card. However, she synergizes with the next 3-2, so it makes her playability skyrocket. 3-2, 5 R, Hero of Pastelage, Rebecca, Hero, and Book. Oh, she doesn't have Animal. Anyways, uh, when you have Beloved Lord Covert in your clock, she gets minus one level. Obviously, that was the level zero we just talked about, which isn't bad at all. Uh, when this card declares an attack, you can choose one of your characters that gets plus 4k power until the end of the turn. Huge amount of power. Oh, this is double R as well. I don't know if I mentioned that. Lastly, when this card reverses the opponent battle and you have the Climax Demon Crystal, which is obviously this wind trigger right here, uh, you can deal one damage to your opponent, send this card to memory, and during the start of your next draw phase, choose one of your hero Passage Rebecca, which is the same card, from your memory and place it onto the border of this card, and this card gets plus 3-5 power until the end of this turn. Overall, I would say Rebecca is a pretty solid card. Um, can come out at level 2 really, really, really easily with uh, level 0 Covert. So really easy to get her out at level 2. Uh, when she attacks, you give any of your character plus 4k. And this is like any time, not climax combo related. So you can give it to herself and she'll be 3-5. Or give it to one of your other weaker characters. And uh, you can help win more fights with that. And lastly, her climax combo is uh, not too shabby itself. Wind trigger, wind trigger, not too shabby to climax combo with. With so the fact that she combos with wind trigger is not bad. So combos with the wind trigger uh, when she attacks or when she reverses an opponent's character in battle, which is really easy to do because uh, she's nine five. You attack, she gets or with the climax, she's ten five. You can give the four K power to herself. She'll be what uh, fourteen five on offense before assist. You can make her fourteen five on offense, so her reversing an opponent's character should be really easy to do. You deal one to your opponent, so they take one damage, and then you can send her to memory, and because she's in memory, uh, she's going. And then at the start of your draw phase, you bring her back. So with her climax combo, she deals one, she goes to memory, and so that way next turn she can come back and uh, she doesn't die and can help you, you know, maintain resources. And uh, she gets plus three five when she returns, making her a thirteen k base, making her really strong. So overall, I would say, the, and next turn, since she'll sur since her survival is guaranteed, you can attack again, and then she'll be, what, 14, 17k on offense before assist? That's ridiculous. So, uh, yeah. Overall, I would say Rebecca, very solid card. Can come out of level 2 really easily. Um, gets plus 4k on attack, which makes it really hard for your opponent to deal with at level 2. And at, at level 2, is really hard to deal with, and at level 3, uh, it's still hard to deal with, so really good. Her class combo, fairly solid. Wind trigger, not bad. Uh, deal 1. And it guarantees her survival, and she'll come back next turn all that much stronger. And overall, I'd say it's a really solid card. And because she goes to memory, you know, help, can help dodge a double attack on reverse or just uh, clock shoots. I guess uh, another downside to the climax combo is you have to send it to memory. Uh, it's not optional. So, you know, if you don't want, like, having the open slot on your field might make you more susceptible to taking damage. So there's also downside, there's that downside. So there's downsides to her climax combos. 
But overall, I would say she's still really good. Not too sure how strong the level 2 lineup was for... Because she's... You can bring her out of level 2 re really easily. I don't think Doc... Uh, not too sure how good Doc Day's level 2 game was. But if they didn't have a good level... If they don't have... If they didn't have a le good level 2 game, then this uh, level 3 Rebecca should definitely help boost it up dramatically. Dr 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 black. Drastically. 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 There we go. That's the word. And that is all for this week. Uh, how long is this video? One hour and 34 minutes, man. And I thought last week's videos was as long as it was going to get. But uh, this one is even longer. So that was, that's all for this week. Um, overall, a very interesting week. A very good week. Showed many interesting double R's for Charlotte. And shows a lot of how the deck is going to play. Showed a couple very good cards for Dog Days as well. So overall, I would say this is a very good week for both series. Uh, quick wrap up, like I always do. Ayumi, definitely, definitely the double R you want to get. Uh, yeah, definitely the green double R you want to get if you're pulling boxes. So try to get three or four Ayumis because it's just too good. The more Ayumis you can get, the better because you can run her in any freaking build. Level three U, I think it's good. I think it's interesting, but I don't know how he's gonna compete. I don't know if people will choose to run him just because there's a lot of competition in the level three lineup. Level zero Shinosuke, uh, I think overshadowed. D don't run this. Ayumi, I think she's. I think it's an okay climax combo, but uh, I don't think people will be running it, and I don't think I would personally be running it. Yusa to Misa, I hope I did a good job explaining it, but I think it's a ton of fun, and I really hope this. I really hope this turns out to be good, because I think it's super cool. Uh, level assist for Yellow, right off the bat, really good, and uh, she changes into level three Yusa. Level changes into level three Misa, and you can get this combo starting at. You can get the combo rocking at level two, and I think that's really interesting. So good level assist. Uh, bad card. Uh, good card. Uh, eh, okay card. Uh, uh, I really don't know how to feel about this, but I, I'll, I'll leave it as good. It's a good, it's good, decent, above average, above average, above average card. Uh, good card. Eh, level assist I think it's better in the series. Uh, really good, Milhi. Really good card. She's pretty cute too. Uh, really good event backup, but I don't know how good blue is, so we'll see. Uh, eh, it's an old, uh, I don't really like this Ayumi, but it's it's playable. Uh, I don't think it's, this card is good. Uh, should have Yandere trait, but it's an okay card. Uh, Ayumi, excellent for a common. And it's very playable. Uh, completely overshadowed by other cards in the set. Uh, pretty good. Pretty good event, but I think it's especially good in Charlotte. Uh, not too sure how to judge this card, but uh, I'll leave it at okay. I'll, I'll leave it at playable. Uh, really good climax combo. Really good climax combo. This is what Haru should have been in uh, Nisekoi. Am I right? Her gold combo should have been, her gold bar combo should have been costless. Anyways, that's just me crying. Uh, Yusa really good for the sister sister deck. Uh, Yusa really good hand fix. Yusa not too sure how practical it is, but I don't think it's going to be very good. So. Kinda sucks it's an R. If this was an uncommon, I think it'd be okay, but it's an R, so wow that sucks. This is an R shit. Damn, that sucks. Anyways, whatever. One one uh event or one one global for uh sister deck, really good. Can be a one oh eight K with two sisters in the back, really good. Uh glasses guy, uh it's, it's actually his it's his first actual decent card, so not bad. Uh Covert and Rebecca. Covert, good card. Rebecca, good card. So having these two that synergize very well with each other, very good. And a wind trigger, really good. So overall, like I said, guys, I hope if you guys are still here, thank you guys for watching. If you guys actually watch all of this, uh, please leave a comment. I'm actually curious to see how many of you guys actually watch till the end. I don't imagine many of you guys watch till the end, but uh, I'm still curious to see how many of you guys... Uh, Actually, stay till the end. So if you guys stay till the end, just leave a, I don't know, leave a sub or something, or leave a, a heart. I don't know, leave something in the comments just so I know. But yeah, uh, overall, uh, I kept you guys here long enough. So hope you guys have a nice day. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and uh, until next time, guys.